that I don't fall in love with you Cause falling in love just makes me blue Well the music plays and you display Your heart for me to see I had a beer and now I hear you calling out for me and I hope that I don't fall in love with you Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out I Hope That I Don't Fall In Love With You by Tom Waits. Man, can that guy write a beautiful song or what? Um, now this tune is a little bit tricky, okay? There's a few chords in it that are slightly awkward for beginners, but you can always kind of simplify some of the bits anyway. Uh, but there's one chord in particular, the F over G, which a lot of beginners will find a little bit tricky. It's not actually that difficult, and it's well worth kind of persevering with if you really dig the tune, because it's a beautiful song, and it's not particularly difficult. I am going to show you a specific fingerstyle pattern as well, which was the pattern that was played the second time through the chord sequence on the original recording, because that's kind of the most standardized one that gets used throughout the song. The very first time, it's a little bit different. Uh, those of you that are uh, really uh, keen on getting it exactly like the record, you can go and work it out. It's not particularly difficult. It's just a couple of the notes are played in a different order, a different finger style pattern. Uh, definitely for beginners, don't feel like you want to stick with that finger picking pattern particularly, because it's a little bit awkward, particularly if you're going to try and sing at the same time. Um, you can simplify it to whatever you want, the finger picking pattern. Uh, but one thing that we do want to be trying to do is using the thumb on the bass note of the chord and then fingers one, two, and three on strings two, three, and four, okay? So you'll start with your third finger on the second string, your middle finger will go on the third string, and your first finger will be playing the fourth string, and they want to be playing those strings all the time. The thumb will move between the fifth string and the sixth string, okay? That's important because some of the chord grips, we want to be able to avoid playing the thinner string. So this is a difficult one to strum. It's, it can be kind of possible, but it, it gets a little bit uh, awkward if you're going to try and strum this song. So you probably want to stick with finger style even for beginners, but just think about simplifying uh, the finger picking pattern uh, if you're new to this style of uh, guitar playing. So uh, let's get to a close up to check out these chords. I think you'll find it a bit easier. Okay, so let's go through the chords first of all, remembering that we've got uh, Mr. Capo here on the second fret. First chord is regular old standard C chord. Okay, hopefully you're all familiar with that. The next chord is an F. Now, many of you are thinking straight away, okay, big bar chord F, but that doesn't work so well in this song. It's possible to, to, to do that, uh, but you're better off using this little version here, third finger, uh, third fret of the fourth string, second finger, second fret of the third string, first finger, first fret of the second string. Okay, now many of you will know that like the mini F normally use your first finger to do a little bar there. We don't need to with this one because we're not playing the thinner string, remember? So just those three notes is uh, plenty good enough for now. If you want to play it just like the original, then you need to get thumb to play the bass note, okay? So it's a really good exercise to go from that F and see if you can kind of wrap your thumb around and grab a hold of that note. Okay, note that it's kind of the edge of the thumb. It's not like the pad of the thumb like you might use with the other fingers. It's kind of the edge. Your thumb's going to be at a bit of a weird angle there anyway, right? So using the edge of your thumb, I kind of roll it on a little bit. I find it easier to think of it as when I'm placing it. Okay, it feels like it's kind of rolling back a little bit. But everyone's got different, you know, thumb lengths and uh, thumb flexibility. There's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, and I couldn't do this for years and years and years, so don't be too upset if you find it very difficult because, yeah, I, I really struggled for a long time to be able to do any of that sort of Hendrixy sort of stuff. But this is, this is a good kind of introduction to it, you know. So start with a little F and see if you can wrap your thumb around to play that bass note. Now the next chord, first and second fingers are gonna stay where they are. Third finger's gonna move from the fourth string over to the thicker string and little finger's gonna go where it was. Okay, this is an F over G. There's your F chord, slash G. So slash chords, as you hopefully know, the, the note after the slash is just the bass note. So it's an F chord with a G bass note. Okay, very cool chord. This is quite jazzy, used a lot in fusion and that sort of thing as well. But lovely in this particular tune. Okay, so 
third fret, nothing on the fifth string, third fret, second fret, first fret, not playing the thinner string either, okay? That's an F slash G. Now if we lift off first finger, the chord becomes G9, okay? You, you could call this kind of G9 sus4, or you could call it G11, or F over G, but this one definitely, the name for this chord would be a G9. Okay, that's the chord grip, so you've got C, F, F over G, to G9. Okay, so you can see there's actually not, the chord movements themselves, once your fingers get around them, are not particularly difficult. And I would definitely recommend spending a little bit of time just going from the C to the F, F over G, to G9, because that's really the key thing that you're looking for there. Okay, just practicing through those chords. The other chords that you need are G, okay, pretty just regular straightforward G, using a third finger. I don't really need the thinner string. I'd tend to put my little finger down on the third fret of the thinner string, even if I wasn't playing it. Um, we've also got a bit of C with an E bass. So there's our F chord using the thumb on the bass. Really nice chord, this C chord with an E bass. So we're playing the E, the thickest string. Okay, I know it's actually an F sharp here because we've got the capo on, but just think of it as an E. Okay, and this is the C chord, but we're not playing the fifth string, so I, you don't have to add that third finger. You can, it doesn't hurt, but I don't tend to. So F, C with an E. Note the first finger just stays in the same place. Just, it's the only difference that's going on. Okay, that's the only chords that you need to know there. So I've got to play it through, just once through a verse, so you can see the way the chords are sitting. Then we'll talk a bit more about the rhythm. So, hope that I don't F in love with F over G. G9. Cause C chord in F just makes me F over G. G9. When the F chord plays and C displays the G that's made for C. I F a beer and C with an E bass to F and then to F over G to G9 and I see that I don't F in G with C okay, There's a few different things that you can uh, twiddle around with there in the last two bars. It's basically just a C but I'll show you a couple of uh, things that you can get through. So there you've seen the chords, now let's talk about the rhythm of them, okay? Because there's a couple of uh, two, four bars in here. So we got two beats on C, two beats on F, then four on F over G, then four on the G9. Then it's C, F, F over G for a whole bar, G9 for a whole bar. Then it's two on F, to two on C, two on G, two on C, two on F, two on C with an E bass, back to two on F, then a whole bar, that's four beats on F over G, four on G9, then C for two beats, one on F, one on G, and then we've got two bars of C, okay, with twiddles, so you can do a few different uh, things there. I normally go C, F over G, or F add nine over G, you could, I suppose you could get that, or F seven sus four, lots of different names that you could call, uh, G seven sus four, um, and then in the second bar I go C, C with a G bass, that would be my normal thing, but I, it changes up all the time, and I think that's a nice place to have a little bit of freedom to try and put something. So one more time through that. So three, four, we have C, F, F over G for a whole bar, G9, and C, F, whole bar on F over G, whole bar on G9. F for two beats, C, then G for two, and 
and then back to C for two. F for two, C with an E bass for two, F for two again, and then a whole bar on F over G. That's four beats. Then G9 for a bar, four beats. Two on C, one on F, one on G, then C, maybe F over G, then C, and then maybe C with a G bass. There's a few different turnarounds that use on that. Sometimes I might put one of those little things in there where it's a C, G, A minor, B with a bass to C. It's just a, it's kind of like a turnaround section, I guess. Let's talk a bit about the finger picking now. So we got our C chord down. We're going to play thumb on the fifth string. First finger will play the fourth string. Uh, second and third fingers will play the second and third strings together. Then first finger will play the fourth string, but actually we want to lift the chord up so we have the open D string, okay? Okay, you don't necessarily have to lift all the fingers off, but it can help you uh, if you're trying to get into the pattern of it. I quite like lifting the, the whole chord off on this kind of thing, because it's, it's making a little a, a link between the chords. So thumb, first, second and third fingers together, then first finger plucking the uh, D string, the fourth string. Same pattern again on the F, so now we're thumb's gonna play the bass string. First finger, two fingers together, second and third fingers together, and then first finger again will pluck the open fourth string. So C, open, F, open. Worth getting that down first. C, F, C, F. All of these sort of patterns when you learn them for the first time, even for me, this was a bit of a weird pattern because I knew I was going to attempt to sing it as well. I'm doing exactly what I was doing, what I'm trying to show you now, which is getting it under my fingers and then trying to distract myself, in this case, by talking to you. Okay, that's how you want to go about trying to learn that kind of thing. So, um, it's doing that just once though. Okay, on the F over G, you've got thumb, first, second and third fingers together, then first. So I'm just naming the finger numbers because you know that thumb's always going to be playing the bass note, first finger's always going to be playing the fourth string, second and third fingers will play second and third strings, right? So thumb, one, second and third, one. Okay, that's the first part. One and two and. Then in beat three, we've got thumb as well as second and third fingers together. Then second and third fingers together, uh, sorry, just by themselves. Then first finger, then second and third fingers again. Okay, thumb, one, second and third, first, together, second and third, first finger, second and third. with that. Just the second half of that bar because it's, it's kind of moving away from the pattern. Then first finger comes off so you're on your G9 and again now you're going to play the thumb and the second and third fingers together. There's nothing on the end after one okay so there's a kind of little pause there. Then first finger then second and third fingers plucked together. One, two and bass, second and third, first second and third. One, two, and three, and four, and. On the and after two, first finger's going back down on the, if you want to play it just like the original. One, two, and. On that one there, your first finger's going back down first fret, second string. One, two, and three, and four, and. One, two, and three, and. This is a little bit of a tricky pattern. Let me take you right through that whole little three bar sequence. Quite unusual having a three bar sequence, but 
works great, hey. So C, open F, open F with the G bass. G minor, but still confusing. G9 is what I meant. Okay. Now, if you're really struggling with that, particularly all of that, uh, the uh, G9 bar, where the rhythm goes a little bit wonky, definitely something to consider is just sticking with this pattern. The, the thumb, one, second and finger, uh, second and third fingers together, and then first finger again. Even if you're not worrying about doing the open D and just going C, F, F over G. G minor. I hope that I don't fall in love with you. And falling in love just makes me blue. Because this is kind of what I'd use for the rest of the song here anyway. And the F and goes to C and no, the G and goes to bass to F and then to the riff and I see that I don't have to G to C see I hate not having a, a very set thing there at the end because I'm never sure what to what to do in the lesson bit but anyway you see on the F to the G where we just had the one strum I'm just playing the thumb and the fingers together so F G C. Okay, this is commonly what I play. C chord, then. And doing a little hammer on there with a little finger into the third fret of the fourth string. And then moving third finger over to play that bass note. Then just C, and then I just play, move the bass note over. That would be how I would normally play this tune but like I said it's a good one for you to have a fun bit of fun with and find your own version. I really hope you enjoy playing this tune it's a real beautiful one there from Tom Waits and like a lot of his stuff there's usually a little bit of a trick to it and this one's having this little three bar sequence and the interesting finger picking pattern you know it's not super easy but I think it's well worth the effort that it'll take you to get this tune nailed down it's a beautiful song lovely one to play feels good playing it as well under under the fingers you know so I uh, hope you dig this plenty more Tom Waits over on the website more than a thousand free lessons waiting for you over there as well so hopefully you see you for plenty more of them very soon you take care of yourselves bye bye